when you first started in real estate, uh, was it flipping or did you kind of go on the, like the wholesaling route? I think a lot of, uh, a lot of new investors kind of get started with, with wholesaling. So did you, did you get started with just flipping in, in the very beginning or did you do something else? Yeah. I mean, wholesaling is definitely, a, it, it's a very easy way to get going because it doesn't require a lot of capital outside of just whatever your marketing costs are. Um, and I mean, you don't necessarily have to have the financing to close on it. Now, and, and, I'll, and I'll throw out a disclaimer there. Um, be honest and truthful with the people you're working with because you're, you're, you're dealing with their uh, home. And a lot of these folks have sincere problems they're looking to solve and they're looking to you as the expert to solve. So um, if, if it's something like you don't have any ability to actually help them and you're just trying to make a quick buck, hoping while using their maybe unique situation that, that could be painful, maybe financially, um, using that as leverage, um, that I, I don't necessarily recommend. But um, I Ultimately, we did get started with wholesaling. So I say we, um, so this is me. Back in 05, the very first deal I did was knocking on doors for pre-foreclosures. So the, the foreclosures were increasing steadily all the way up until the crash. This is 2005, I believe, or 2004. And knocking on doors. And uh, I took a real estate course on, on what to do and um, got my first yes, meaning the guy actually opened the door. He didn't yell at me. He didn't cuss me out. And he was like, Hey, like, how can you help me? And at that point I brought the, the, the my mentor in and he helped negotiate the deal. Uh, we did close on it, but then we sold it to another investor. So it, nowadays you would call that a whole tail type deal. Um, I don't know if that ver <laughs> verbiage was around back then. The very next deal was a double close, which is basically a wholesale, but I use the back end buyer's money to fund the actual front end seller. Um, third deal was a lease option. And then fourth deal was another lease option. Um, I should note the fourth deal was a subject to rental. Um, so those are the first four deals that I did uh, all while still, still in college. Right, yeah, I was gonna ask that. So you, you did those deals, you did four deals when you were still in college. And I'm assuming they were, they were close together. They weren't like spread out across, like, you know, you did your first deal as, as a freshman and then your, your second deal as a sophomore. No, they were all within like a year time, time frame. Okay. Like uh, I'm a senior in college. Um, so yeah, they were all within a year time frame. All right. So they were all within a year time frame. They were pretty close together. And um, so, yes, yeah, so, I mean, people getting started. And I think you mentioned this as well with your first deals that you worked with a, you worked with a mentor. So do you think that came into play? Uh, when it came to like just giving you confidence or do you think like I guess my question is do you think when somebody's getting started especially kind of at that age as well that they need to be working with somebody who's a little bit more experienced to give them kind of that edge uh, to push them through when it when it comes to as big of a, a big of a transaction as, as real estate yeah ultimately what you're trying to do is you're trying to bridge the education gap now in 2005 um, YouTube I, I I believe it was there. It was nothing like it is now. Um, Google was there, but it was nothing like it is now. And so like, and by nothing like it is now, I'm talking about content that's readily available, high quality content that you can absorb in some form of manageable, organized way. Um, so ultimately back then that was still new. And, and ultimately, if, if you want to get educated, you either need to try by fire. You got to do it yourself, figure it out. Or you had to learn from someone, which you could either do that in time, maybe you can work with someone, or you pay for it. Um, I ended up paying for it. It was fifteen hundred bucks for a weekend boot camp, and I, I know there's a lot of stuff out there that it's it's junk, um, money grabs from from gurus or, and whatnot. But um, ultimately, I went in with the approach of, hey, look, like I'm good. I'm just going to do what they say. Like they're they're going to show me something, a system. And so I'm just going to do it. And I did. Yeah. Um, I didn't have these mental blocks of, oh, that, that doesn't work. And, and so I'm the youngest guy in this class. I'm 21 years old, I guess. Yeah. And uh, every, pretty much every single weekend after that class, I drove from College Station, Texas, because I went to a &M, to San Antonio. Because at the time, San Antonio was online. Like, there's not a lot of uh, government databases online at this time. So, but San Antonio, Bear County, they were one of the first counties in the nation completely online. So I could look up pre-foreclosures from a dorm room. So I'd drive around three hours, 
every single weekend. I didn't have the money for a hotel. So I would drive back and then drive back again on Sunday and knock on doors all day. So eight to 10 hours. And I did that for three months straight, three months straight before I finally got a yes, before I finally got a deal. Um, so now, now today, do you need to pay for a mentor? I don't know. It really just depends on how you want to fast track your success. Um, I mean, can you find enough information online? I mean, I put out a ton of content. You're putting out content. There's a lot more folks putting out content. Most of it's free. So at the end of the day, can you figure it out doing YouTube for free? Absolutely. Um, what is a little harder to figure out is all the educational gaps in between the videos, uh, in between the blogs, things that don't make it in, whether intentionally or unintentionally, it's just, it's hard to really describe everything. Um, so what we see more now, instead of just regular education in the real estate space, we actually see more coaching, which, which is something I haven't done at least in, in any scale uh, capacity for the entire, my ter entire career, um, other than the past couple of years, when I finally enough folks were just asking like, Hey, look, like, can you help me? Can you help me? And so finally we, we were able to create something, um, collaborate, collaborated with a buddy of mine, Brent Phillips to, to offer that. But, um, it, it's not required, I guess, to, in, in summary, it's not required. It can fast track success, but ultimately, regardless of what you do, it's your responsibility to take the action. And that's where I think most people fail. It doesn't matter if they pay for it or, or they want to do their, um, you know, their own research. They're just not willing. Are you willing to like knock on doors every day for three months or every weekend for three months? I'm like I was, and I got a deal.